fungi reproduce through the production of spores. The term spore is a very general term because there are a great variety of spores produced within fungi. And within rusts, a single species can actually produce five different kinds of spore. The spores of the most primitive fungi possess flagella, but all other fungal spores do not possess flagella and depend on the wind, or in some cases, water to disperse them. Spores measure from 2 to 75 microns in size, and because of their small size, 2 microns is the size of an average bacterium, they can easily be dispersed through air, and thus wind can transport uh, spores, and the amount of spores in the air is the subject of study. Some have even named this study aerobiology. The number of spores in a cubic meter of air can outnumber the pollen grains by a factor of a hundred to a thousand. It is of interest how climate change is affecting the production of fungal spores and their content in air, especially since they can worsen allergies and asthma, both of which are on the rise. Fungal spores are very difficult to identify through their morphology alone, and thus PCR is important in identifying the DNA that they contain. Some fungi from terrestrial sources can even reach the oceans and potentially germinate in marine environments, and these are called geofungi. Some have been isolated in sediments up to 5,000 meters in depth. Fungi vary in whether they are produced through asexual processes or sexual processes, and in many fungi there are different types of spores which are produced in each of these processes. Puffball fungi can release a total of 7 trillion spores. An average size mushroom can release 40 million spores per hour. And so the production of fungal spores is of great interest, not only in the propagation of fungi, but then also in relation to the diseases that they may spread, the ecological roles that they may have, and their contribution to allergy and asthma.